As developers, we've been creating modals, pop-ups, tooltips, and dialogues for decades, and I thought it was pretty much as good as it could get, but the new HTML dialogue element absolutely is a game changer for creating modals and pop-ups because it makes it so easy to create custom modals that have full accessibility, even better than most techniques that you're currently using. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how this dialogue element works, how to get the most out of it, and why you should start using it now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And if you didn't know, I actually have a blog which I have tons of articles on, well over 100 different articles on this blog. And the most recent article that I wrote is actually on modals and the dialogue element inside of HTML. So if you want, you can go check this out. It has interactive examples of how to actually use the modal and dialogue element inside of HTML. I'll link it down in the description for you. But for this video, we have an actual demo here where I'm not using the dialogue element. This is kind of the more traditional way you would create a modal inside of HTML. So if we go through the code, we have some really basic styles for our overlay, which is this darkening of our background, and this modal, which is this middle section here. Super straightforward styles, nothing really too crazy, just toggling between display none and display block, depending on if they are open or not. Then inside my HTML, it's very straightforward. I have a button here that opens the modal. I have a button here inside my modal, which closes it. If I just kind of break this up, you can see open button. I have my overlay, which shows that blackish background. I have my modal here and inside of that, I have the button to actually close my modal. Super straightforward stuff here, not too crazy. And in my JavaScript, again, this is also pretty straightforward. I just have some selectors to get those different elements. And if I click the open button, I add the class open. And if I click close, I remove that class. So this right here is the traditional way that you would normally create a modal inside of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. You may make yours slightly differently or make it look a lot better than mine, but this is kind of the standard way people do things. And there's a few things off the bat that are already not ideal with this solution. The first one is, is I have this random div for overlay, which is obviously not ideal. And no matter how you do an overlay, it requires you to do something with an extra element or a pseudo element, and it's just not ideal at all. Also, I need to make sure that I hide my modal by default and only show it when it's actually supposed to be shown on the screen. And probably the biggest problem with this implementation is you notice everything's working fine. If I click, I cannot click on this open button. But if I click tab, you'll notice I can actually tab right onto that open button. You can see I'm actually clicking that open button it has that black outline around it. So I can actually tab right over that open button by doing tab and I can interact with my entire site by using tab, which is obviously not ideal. And if you don't implement things correctly, this is what's going to happen inside of your modals. But the dialogue element takes care of all of that. So let me show you how I would actually write this using the dialogue element. The very first thing that I would do is completely get rid of this overlay. I don't need it at all. And instead I can come in here where I have my div and I can just replace it with a dialogue element just like this, super straightforward. So I can completely get rid of this overlay. I don't need it, so I'll get rid of it from my JavaScript and everything. And now here I have a dialogue. It still has the class and modal. I'm gonna remove that for now, just so we can see what everything looks like by default. And that right there is all I need to do to create a modal, but I need to make sure I toggle my modal slightly differently. So instead of adding a class list, there's actually a function called show on your modal, and there's also a function called show modal. So depending on if you want this to be a dialogue or a modal, you'll use each method interchangeable. I've kind of gone into depth on the difference between these two right here inside of my blog article. But the main difference you should know is that if you open up a modal, it's the only thing you can interact with. You can see I can scroll my page, but I can't actually interact with any of these buttons. And using tab only allows me to interact with the close button on the modal and nothing else on my page. If you use a dialog, I can still do whatever else I want on my page. It just kind of opens up like a pop-up or a tooltip, and I can close it whenever I want inside of here. That's the main difference between the two. So we're gonna use show modal because that actually shows you a modal and I'll show you the dialogue one as well. And also to close it, you just call the close method. That's all you need to do. So now if I click open, you can see that it opened up a modal. It automatically darkened my background for me. And these are the basic styles that it has given me. It's super basic, but the nice thing about this is it's really easy to overwrite with custom styles. This isn't like a select element or a checkbox where you have some weird shadow DOM stuff going on. This dialogue is just like essentially a div with a few custom styles added to it by default. So what you can do is here where I have my modal, I can just replace this with dialog, or I could just come in here and I can add the class of modal to this. And that'll give me all the styles that I had before. And I can get rid of this open stuff and this display none because I don't need that. The position fix is already there by default, so I don't need that either. And if I just give that a quick save and click open, you can now see that this modal has essentially the same styles that I had before. You will notice the position is a bit off. That's because I don't even actually think I need these different styles for position in the center. So if I open, you can see it's already positioned in the center by default. And that's because if I actually look at the DOM here, this is kind of interesting. I'll bring this over. If we look at our elements tab here, 
you'll notice that this dialog is actually open in this thing called this top layer down here, which allows us to do some really interesting things with your focusing of your different tabs, and that allows you to put it in the center of the screen as well. And the reason why this is really useful is you'll notice if I click tab, I can never tab onto this open. It always just goes straight to everything inside of the modal. And also when I open my modal, it automatically by default will tab me onto whatever the first like input is in here if I have a form, for example, which is again really useful. It automatically moves your tab focus into the actual modal itself. So if I just refresh this and I open this with my spacebar, you can see it's automatically put my tab focus right on this close button, which is great. Another really great thing about this dialog element by default for accessibility is if I have it open, I can click the escape key and it'll actually close my dialog for me, which is something that we would have had to build out ourselves with the other version. I didn't even have it built out. So it's really nice to kind of get all of these accessibility features by default and also takes care of all those different area attributes you need to make sure screen readers understand what's going on. So really the important thing to understand with actually using a modal is it's very simple. All you do is you create this dialog element right here. You can give it some custom styling if you want, but in our case, I'm just gonna remove that because we really don't need any custom styles at all. I'm just gonna get rid of all of these custom styles. We really don't need them. As you can see, it's good enough for our purposes. All you really need to know though is whenever you click on a button or do something that you want to cause to open the modal, you just give it this show modal method. You just call that and that'll show a modal version of this. The other way you can open the dialog is by adding the open attribute to it. That'll cause it to be open by default, but this opens it in a non-modal way. It opens it as a dialog and not as a modal. It'd be the same as if I called the show method instead of the show modal method. You can see when I click this, it opens it up as a dialog and I would need to add custom styling to position it exactly where I want relative to this specific element here. Now, one thing to note is that using the open attribute like this is definitely not advised. It doesn't give you all the same features as using the actual function version. So I highly recommend just call the show or show modal function depending on what you want to do. Now, I mentioned earlier that the actual customization of the modals is really good for CSS. And that's also true because you can customize the backdrop as well. If we go back to open this up as a modal, you'll notice that it gives a slight darkening to the background, but what if I wanted to change that? Well, what you can do is you can select a pseudo element called the actual backdrop. So let's see our dialog here, and we wanna select a pseudo element that requires two colons, and this is called backdrop. And then here is how you define all your colors. So if I just say that the background color here is going to be RGBA, Actually, let's do HSL. We'll do HSL 200, 100%, uh, 50%, and we'll do like 0.5 opacity. Make sure this is HSL, just like that. Now, if I give that a save and open this up, you can see now I get this partially opaque blue background instead. So any custom styles you wanna to add to your backdrop, whether it's a color or maybe something else, you can put right into here, which is really great. One of my favorite things about this dialogue element is just how customizable it is. It's really easy to customize with CSS and you can stick anything you want inside of it when it comes to HTML. So you can pretty much do whatever you want with this dialogue element. And it's almost like having a custom modal component built into HTML, which is incredible. Now there's a few other kind of advanced things that you can do with this as well. I'm gonna get rid of the styles. I'm just gonna bring it back to how it was by default. But let's say that I had a form inside of my modal instead. So as you can see, have a form with an input of text and a submit button just like this. So if I open this up, type in some text, hit submit, you're going to notice it submits my form as if it was a normal form. But what if I want to just make it close the modal? This is actually something that's built into HTML, which is awesome. I can just come up to my form and I can say that my method here is going to be dialogue. And now what's going to happen is I can type in whatever I want, click submit, and it doesn't actually submit my form. All it does is close out of my modal. And when I open it back up, you can see I have the exact same input inside of here. This is super useful and I can actually listen to events in JavaScript for when my modal is closed and submitted with my form to determine what I need to do, like saving my inputs and so on if I wanted to like update some user settings. You can even take this a step further where let's say for example, I wanted to have a modal where if I clicked a cancel button, it would cancel it or if I click submit, it would submit it as if it was a normal form. So I would want to remove this method dialog here so it submits like a normal form. And then I wanna add in essentially a cancel button just like this. The problem with this though, if I click cancel, it still submits my form. I wanted to close the modal, but I wanted to also save the inputs and I don't wanna to have to you know, worry about doing a bunch of JavaScript for this. Well, that's great because there's a way to do this built into HTML again. All you have to do is go into your button and set the form method. If you set it to dialogue and you click save, if I open this up, I can type in whatever I want, click submit, everything is exactly like a normal form. Now, if I come in here and I click cancel, 
you're gonna notice it doesn't submit. And if I open this back up, you can see it saved everything inside of here. It essentially works exactly the same as if I set method dialog on my form itself, but I set it for a specific button so I can make this my cancel button and the other button just submits my form as if it was a normal form on a normal page. I really love how much customization there is related to forms inside of the dialog element. And if you wanna go more in depth into that and how all the different examples work, I have a full article on it right here so you can really check all that out. Also something to note is when you open this up, it automatically default puts your focus inside the input, which is just a great accessibility feature. Now, the only thing that the dialog element doesn't do that I really wish it did is let's say I open up a modal here and I wanna close the modal when I click outside the modal. This is a kind of common feature with modals. Well, as you can see, I'm clicking outside of here and it's not actually closing my modal. This is not built into dialogs and there's no way to configure it to do this by default. So you need to write a little bit of custom JavaScript to do that. And here I'm just gonna paste in what that JavaScript is going to look like. This is going to be our modal. We wanna get our modal dimensions, there we go, and close it. So what this simple function is doing is saying, whenever I click on my modal, run this function. Now, the reason this works is because the backdrop is a child of our dialog. So you can see here inside of our dialog, the backdrop is a child of it, which means anytime we click on our backdrop or our actual modal itself, it's going to run this function. Then what I'm doing is I'm just getting the dimensions of my actual dialog element, the actual modal itself, and I'm checking to see, did I click within those dimensions? Or I'm sorry, did I click outside of those dimensions? If so, close the modal. So if I clicked outside of my modal, I want to close it. If I clicked inside my modal, don't do anything at all. So if I give this a quick save, open this up, and I click inside of here, you'll notice nothing's happening. If I click outside of here, you notice it's still not closing. The reason for that is because I have this close button here and it's breaking my code. It doesn't actually exist anymore. So now if I get rid of that, I come up here, click inside of here, you notice it's not closing. It's working just fine. Click outside, it automatically closes. So if you want to have that click outside feature, it's going to be this code right here. And if you want to copy and paste this, this is right on my blog article. You can just copy paste it straight from here. And I have a sh working example of it shown right here. So just go over to my blog article. It'll be linked in the description if you want to just copy this code. Now, if you enjoyed this video on the dialogue element, you're going to love this video right over here where I cover five plus different HTML elements that are all lesser known like the dialogue element, which are going to drastically change how you write your HTML code. Also, I highly recommend you check out my blog. It'll be linked down in the description below. Like I said, I have tons of articles on there covering tons of different topics, and a lot of those don't ever make it to YouTube, so I highly recommend you check that out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.